Good afternoon, everyone. This is Vietka again, and uh, welcome to another episode of Creative Youth Studio. So today's installment, I'm extra excited. I know I'm excited every time, but today we actually have some alumni who are joining us, uh, who are alumni in two very different ways. And I'd like to introduce our host, who's very near and dear to my heart, actually. Uh, she was last seen in Cancelled, a work with San Diego Diversionary Theater. Um, she's also had a passion for performing since she was four. She made her debut as one of my favorites, Annie, with CYT. And recently, she's also been credited at the WOW Festival. Um, her name is Jada Naya, and she's a senior at High Tech High. And she'll continue her education with a pursuit of her BFA. And so I know she's super happy to be here, but I'm actually on, honored to have her here today. So Jada, welcome. Hello, thank you, Bianca, for the amazing intro. I'm happy to be here, so excited to be the host of the Creative Youth Studio today. And today's special guest, I actually met doing Shakespeare Studio with you. And I'm really excited to hear her talk today. Her name is Rianne Acasio, and she's gonna share some insight about her life and how she's managing through this industry. Take it away. Hi, howdy, thanks for having me. Today we're gonna to talk about making connections, how career and community are intertwined. Now, I feel really lucky to be able to speak to a group of young artists because it wasn't that long ago that I was a young adult navigating a new career in theater. Being a young artist, you are in such a unique position to be able to explore different facets of the industry and learn about what you like and dislike, what you might want to pursue, and where you might find your strengths lie, possibly even discovering new strengths you might not have known you had. You might be in the position right now where you are undecided, and <laughs> let me say that is completely 110% okay. You might not have specific career goals yet. This is the time to explore. Maybe you have a general idea of what you like and dislike, or maybe you already know what you want to pursue and are ready to hit the ground running. Well, this class is geared toward all of the above. As you know, theater is a collaborative art. It would not exist without a community. For theater artists of any age, finding, building, and being active in your community are integral to a career in theater. And lucky for you, it's never too early to start, nor is it ever too late. <laughs> so you've already learned from Jake, Tara, and Coco in previous episodes about the business of acting, auditions, headshots, resumes, representation, all of it, essential information to an acting career. But what else? Is there more I can do outside of auditioning? Or what if I have other passions outside of acting? What if I'm unsure about uh, my career path and want to see how other jobs function on a day-to-day -day basis? How do I start building my network? How do I start getting to know the theater professionals around me and having them get to know me? All of these are valid questions and hopefully I can provide you with some guidance to find those answers. For me, I graduated college without a theater degree and virtually no one in the theater community outside my college campus knew who I was or what I could do. Within a couple of years, I had deep connections in San Diego's theater community, as well as connections in LA and New York City. I had worked with nearly all the major theaters in San Diego, and I was the youngest full-time employee at the Old Globe. I am now a New York City-based union actor who had only started acting professionally a couple years ago, and just got her first professional headshot last year. Well, how the heck? My simplest answer is, tons of help <laughs> and a deep dive in the into the community. The theater community is a small world. A ton of this industry is based on connections, recommendations, and referrals. It really is, you know, who you know. And 
by getting super involved in my theater community, I connected with amazing theater artists who believed in me, took a chance on me, and got me to where I am today. Obviously, hard work and kindness are essential, but in this business, you also need to be able to connect with people. That's all really great. Sounds awesome. I was so happy to connect with you this past summer <laughs> and learn about you and your life. So I actually have a question. You talk about how you work in NYC and LA. How do you do that when your base is San Diego? Is it online? Do you travel there every week? How do you learn more about them when you're here? That's a really great question. Uh, jumping back to what I said about theater being a really small community, it's a small world. A lot of people know each other. And it's not just that they know each other in San Diego, they know people in LA, they know people in New York, we're all interconnected. A lot of the major theater companies like La Jolla Playhouse, The Old Globe, San Diego Rep, they also audition out in LA. They also audition out in New York City. So they, they have their connections there. And so by getting to know your local theater company, you're perhaps building your network in those other cities as well. Um, for me personally, from my experience, I would drive up sometimes to do auditions in LA and meet those casting people in person. I was able to do that, fortunately, because I had a car and the time to be able to drive up to LA. Um, and through other processes like doing shows and meeting professionals on the shows that I worked on who knew people in New York and would help me get uh, Broadway callbacks in New York City and I'd fly out and do those or auditions in LA. It's really like everybody knows each other. And if they like your work, maybe they'll refer you. Um, but it's just a really great reminder that everyone's interconnected. A lot of people just, um, they, they know each other and they talk. So that's how that's it's, it's a lot. Um, <laughs> it's, it's easier said than done. But really, the more work you do, and the more people you get to know, the easier it is to make those connections. Yes, thank you so much. Now let's begin your workshop. Yeah, let's do it. So one of the most valuable opportunities to engage with your theater community are quite literally audience engagement opportunities. These are offered at most theater companies in association with their production season and are often free. These events allow you to meet industry professionals, both local and national, sometimes even worldwide, Listen, listen to them talk about their processes on the show and even ask them any burning questions you might have for them. I found that attending these and learning the pros, learning from the pros in person, not only expanded my theater education with insider knowledge, but also helped me get to know artists from all over. Actors, designers, playwrights, directors, composers, lyricists, it almost seemed like taking a master class with each one of them for free. For instance, I'm not a costume designer, but getting to see a pro who is so passionate about their work talk about their process from sketch to the final piece is so insightful, and for someone else, it might even spark a passion for it. Oftentimes, I would hear that an artist who worked on one of my favorite Broadway productions would be a guest here in San Diego. And when I attended, they talked about that very production with behind the scenes secrets and funny stories. So I was able to meet people whose work I deeply admired and people who inspired me personally here in my backyard. Um, for those of you who are in that undecided category, this can be super helpful hearing from experienced professionals talk about their jobs and, and seeing if you connect. So I just want to talk about a few of these opportunities that are offered locally. La Jolla Playhouse has Talk Back Tuesdays where you can participate in a facilitated discussion with actors and artistic staff immediately following the performance and the green room where before the show you can hear directly from the writers, directors, and designers about their process from the page to opening night. The Old Globe, yeah, yeah, has Vicky and Carl Zeiger Insight Seminars where before the show, artists working on the production are interviewed by a Globe rep about their work, their processes on the show, and their lives. And a Q&A is opened up with the audience and cookies and sparkling beverages are served. Is that la croix? All for free. They also have post-show forums. 
where after the show, the audience has a Q&A with the cast. Now, these are so fun. I've been on both sides of these. And um, it's such a fun opportunity for artists and audiences to connect and have a laugh. Um, actors talk about the inside story on creating a character and putting on a professional production. Again, this is free. Uh, for you Shakespeare heads, I know there's a lot of you out there, the Globe also has Shakespeare in the Garden during their summer season, where out in the garden for the show, a teaching artist hosts an informal, interactive presentation to engage participants in understanding the play and concepts of the production, inviting audience participation with Shakespeare's text, and offering insight and history of the play to attendees and passerby. And guess what? It's also free. Um, lastly, San Diego has Talk and Theater with Todd, where you can join Rep Associate Artistic Director Todd Salovey, who also happens to be my, uh, he was my college theater mentor and hooked me up with my first internship. Um, you join him for a pre-show conversation with playwrights, actors, and other theater professionals. The Rep also has Meet the Artists, where after the show, Rep Associate Producer and casting director Kim Heil chats with the actors and gets answers to your burning questions. Now, these are just a few of the many amazing opportunities available to you to learn directly from industry professionals and ask your questions. You don't have to fly to New York for these. They're right here in your backyard. I encourage you to take a look online for more information and find out when these are happening. Obviously not until the theater industry is back on its feet, um, but many companies actually are offering virtual conversations with artists with some even allowing questions in the chat. So that's a great alternative during the pandemic. Yes, it's amazing. Thank you. These are so many great opportunities. A question that we had was, why do you think theaters offer these for free, don't you think they could get paid for them? And something that I struggle with when I take these like little workshops in theaters is knowing what questions to ask because I have so many on my mind, but I just don't know which one is the right one to raise my hand. Oh, absolutely. These are great questions. So the first one with why are they free? Um, <laughs> that's, a, that's a good question. Why are they free? Well, a lot of these theater institutions are funded by um, donors. A lot of them, um, they, they are able to provide these programs for free to engage with their communities, engage with their audiences, which is really important in the arts. They just, they don't want to just put on a show for you. They want to engage with you. They want to know what you think, know your questions. Um, and so for fortunate theater companies that are like nonprofit, like the Long Playhouse and, and the Old Globe, um, they are able to provide these things and these opportunities free of charge. Now they do have some programs that are charging, um, like one one thing that the Globe charges for is tours, which is like three dollars per person, and that's not including discounted rates. But these are really great opportunities for little to no cost, and that's that's just something great to to take advantage of. And I I don't want to ask any further why they're so uh, affordable because I don't want to change that. <laughs> Now your second question about um, what to ask when you, when attending these when attending these uh, engagement opportunities that's a that's a great question. Um, the first one I'll talk about is is the guest that you are seeing that is presenting do they work in your in the field that you are interested in pursuing? Because if so, you might already have a lot of personal questions you want to ask or technical questions, um, more specific questions. But if they aren't in your field, or if they are, um, you might have more general ones. One of my favorite questions I like to ask is, what advice would you give your younger self? That's a really great question because a lot of times when I was when I was younger, even to this day, I, I felt misguided or I didn't really quite know which direction to go in. And to hear a professional, a seasoned professional who is years beyond me in, in their career, maybe in age, but we're not gonna talk about age, um, who, who just have a lot more time and experience in their career telling, telling me what they would have told their younger self. It's actually really grounding and, and it, it brings back this, it pulls back this dream into something that is tangible, a reality for me, actually gives steps for me or something to think about that's more digestible for someone my age because you have this like 
maybe decades in this in this theater field. They're like, how how can I get to that point? Maybe they probably went to Juilliard or I went to this, you know, really prestigious high school. But no, sometimes they didn't. And it's great to hear what they would tell the younger selves because maybe they were in the same exact boat as you. Maybe they didn't know what they wanted or where to go or what to do, how to get to that level, how to achieve this. And so it's taking these big ideas and just making them tangible, making them smaller and, and something that is a lot more achievable in your mind than this big stressful, I can never do that. How do you do that? And it makes them more relatable. And it's always great. I always see um, guest artists light up when they see a young person asking them about their career because it's it's great to instill hope and and bring young people into this industry. It's, it's, it's really great. So I hope that answers your question. Yes, it did. Thank you so much. Great. Now can you tell us some insider info about how to run a theater behind the scenes. Yes. Oh, seeing a theater run behind the scenes is so cool. It's like those Mr. Rogers neighborhood episodes where they put in the VHS and it shows you like the factory of how things are made. I don't know. That's just it's so cool to see what happens behind the scenes that you don't get to usually see when you just buy a ticket and watch a show. So theaters like the Old Globe and La Jolla Playhouse offer tours of their stages and production shops. I can speak from experience that oftentimes on Globe Tours, you'll find people on the job and many are generous with their time and pause what they're doing to share their project with you or give insider knowledge and answer questions. I recommend this to all theater artists, no matter if you're a stage manager, a writer, director, actor, designer, Getting to know theater spaces outside of just your seat and the stage helps you learn about your local theater companies just a little more intimately. Again, take a look online for more specific information on how to book a tour. Now, I want to just take a look at this graphic. These are some photos taken on the Old Globe's backstage tours. Out on the plaza, as you can see, you see the white stage here gorgeous. You, they talk about the technical things about how it works, about previous productions where like one, the whole stage lifted up and, and lowered, that there's like so much space underneath where set pieces can go and people walk around. It's really cool to learn about the, the capabilities, the technical capabilities of each space and seeing it um, while it's not in function. That's, that's actually really cool without the actors and all the lights. It's actually really cool to see a space like that. One of my favorite stops here in that third picture is the costume shop. The costume shop is so cool. A lot of times you'll see um, the staff working in the costume shop when you come and visit. And sometimes they'll be working on these, oh, voluptuous, gorgeous, like Shakespeare gowns, uh, depending on it's, if it's a summer and they're working on a Shakespeare production, or if it's like Christmas time, you'll see maybe costumes from Whoville. And it's really cool to see these costumes they're almost like otherworldly off of the actor and see even them in different states of, of construction, whether it's like maybe just the undergarment part or like where they're just putting on the finish, finishing magical touches and the costume design is so technical. I think it's so cool to learn about how they achieve such uh, detailed, beautiful designs. One like cool thing is that the Grinch, sorry to ruin the magic for you kids, but <laughs> the Grinch, like he wears layers of different like pieces of, it's not just one big suit. He has to, he like wears layers. And so it's really cool to see these costumes deconstructed or costumes being just, ah, uh, just materializing in front of you. And it's, it's beautiful. And then that last picture is um, if you are interested in pursuing the technical side of theater, you'll be able to see spaces like the booth uh, backstage underneath the stage where we actually keep some of our props and you'll see, um, you know, what it looks like backstage. If you haven't seen what big theaters look like with fly spaces and um, there's a lot of like wires down there. So stay close to your tour guide folks. Um, but those are just some of my favorite parts in the tour. So I really encourage you, like I said, no matter what kind of theater artist you are, or if you're not even a theater artist at all, it's actually really cool to see what happens and how we put on these productions outside of just, you know, the actors on stage. There's a lot of people, theater is collaborative, a lot of people involved in making these happen, these shows happen on our stages. Wow, that's amazing. I do have a question though. Sure. Obviously, theaters are not giving tours, unfortunately, because of this pandemic that we're in. <laughs> right. So how can I be more intimate with my theater? I want to learn more about my local theater. How can I do that when coronavirus is here? 
That's a great question. I think Vietka can answer this one better than I can. Vietka? You put me on the spot, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, no, no. Actually, that's a great question because, you know, when the pandemic hit, a lot of people were very confused and didn't know what to do and didn't know if theater would continue. And uh, I'm really proud of the work that uh, the Arts Engagement Department at the Old Globe has done because literally two days after shutdown, we started creating programming and we uh, basically started a TV channel, a TV network on Facebook and YouTube. And now we have tons of programming and we understand that this is not reaching everybody. Uh, there is a population that does not have access to steady internet. There is a population of the seniors and veterans and those who um, just simply cannot come to spaces even if they're socially distanced. And so we're trying to figure out ways to reach them either by providing content to bring physically to their location and maybe distributing it that way um, using their closed circuit TVs, um, maybe sending them a DVD of what they're up to. And so those are just a few of the ways we're exploring in creating new content so that we can reach an even wider audience. Uh, one of them does include a virtual tour. And so we're looking into safety protocols so that everyone, including our cleaning staff, our maintenance crew, um, will be safe once we kind of go through all the spaces. Uh, obviously, we can't have very many people in those spaces, so we're trying to bring the tours to the public. And so keep an eye out for that. We're really excited to debut that soon. I can pretend I'm like in a theater video game. <laughs> going around. Yeah, that's amazing. Thank you so much, Vietka, for that insight. So, Rianne, would you like to continue? Yeah, that's cool that you, you mentioned your expansion, Vietka, because um, I actually do want to talk about internships. I think you mentioned that in your expansion program. So let's, let's dive into internships. Um, for those of you who have a pretty good idea of what you want to pursue, internships are great to get on the job experience and to work with professionals in your desired field. Internships helped greatly in building my network as I got to know the staff members of the companies I worked for, as well as the artists who came in to work on shows. I still look back on the knowledge that I gathered from those internships as invaluable. My first internship was casting at SD Rep, and my second was artistic at La Jolla Playhouse. Even though I was pretty certain that acting was my passion, learning the ins and outs of casting and artistic departments helped helps my career to this day. For example, I know how to format my headshot and resume so that the acting, the, I mean the casting team, pardon me, has an easier time processing them. You wouldn't believe how much time was spent trying to process incorrectly formatted headshots and resumes. I always had to do them in bulk, and I remember getting some that were glued together. So I had to sit and separate them before I could run them through the scanner. I mean, have you ever tried to separate paper glued on paper? Rips galore, and this Resume has important information on it, so I can't rip it and like get rid of that info. So that was really helpful to learn. I also got insight on how they're sorted, like if they're local or out of town, union or non-union and how they present race-wise. I also got to be the audition monitor who basically checks in actors at auditions where I learned that it matters how you treat the monitor. If an actor, disrespected me or caused any problems outside the audition room, I was told to report it to the casting director. I was sometimes a reader in the room too. That was fun. And it was interesting to see how many actors kind of switch on when they walk in. Or um, it's also interesting to see which actors thank you at the end of your audition of their audition or ignore you. Now I'm not trying to say, you know, how dare you not thank me. I just want you to know that casting directors also want to know how you are to work with. You could be the most talented actor, but if you're a pain to work with, you might not get hired. On the other side of the coin, an actor might flub a line in their audition monologue, but was kind and courteous to everyone in the room. I've witnessed casting teams spend the little 30 seconds between auditions talking about how lovely the actor was to work with and not say one word about the flubbed line. So if there's a single piece of advice 
I want you to walk away with after this, it's be kind to everyone. Not only is it a decent human thing to do, it, you just also might not know who they are, who they know, or who else they might tell. Uh, swinging it back to internships, um, when looking for an internship, it's important to first ask yourself these questions. Who do you want to work with? Like, are there artists you admire that you want to work with? Uh, what companies do you admire and why? What do you want to learn or get out of the internship? That's really important. Um, the more specific you are about things like these, the stronger your application. For example, I loved the shows at that La Jolla Playhouse produced. I, I went to UCSD and because La Jolla Playhouse was on their campus, they had this partnership or something where I had a discount to go see their shows as a student. Um, their shows were fresh, beautiful, edgy, diverse, and they didn't stray away from difficult topics. So for me, it was an absolute dream to be able to work there. I, I knew I wanted to work for the now Tony Award-winning director, Christopher Ashley, uh, from Broadway's Come From, from Away, if you've ever seen it or um, heard of it. He's the artistic director of the Playhouse, and I knew I had a strong interest in the artistic department. So I explained that in my cover letter, attached it to my very short resume. At that point, I was quite young and had worked like a dining hall and a coffee shop, probably, um, and attached to a glowing recommendation, which I'll talk more about later. And out of tons of applicants for this coveted position, I got it. Next thing I know, I'm sitting in on meetings with artistic and creatives, uh, attending design presentations and company breakfasts, and helping with dramaturgy for upcoming productions. Now, that recommendation I mentioned came from a PhD student who used to work at the Playhouse. One of my theater classes was taught by her, and because she got to know me and my work ethic in that class, it was easy for her to write a recommendation for me. Um, I, I didn't take her class in the hopes of getting a recommendation. In fact, I, I didn't even know she would have been in that kind of position. So again, a lot of this business is about who you know. Work hard and be kind to everyone. We're, we're still friends to this day, and I'm still so grateful to her. Um, Allison, if you're listening, hey, thank you. Um, genuine connections are so much more important than business connections. Y'all, people can tell the difference. Building your network is really building your community. Uh, so back to it, there are quite a few ways to search for internships. One is playbill.com. They have a call board where you can search internships and refine that search by state or if it's paid or unpaid and some other um, filters as well. I saw that there are some internships that work remotely. So I would definitely look into those while we're still dealing with the pandemic. Another way is to go directly to the theater companies website. Their website usually has the most up-to-date information on internships they're accepting applications for. La Jolla Playhouse has an extensive list of internships, including, but not limited to, artistic department, which I did, company management, that's a fun one, uh, PR, stage management, education and outreach, and marketing. So really across the board, there's, there's, so, there's something for everyone. San Diego Rep has casting, literary management, and dramaturgy, producing, and the Latinx New Play Festival. The Old Globe has them as well, and I was actually first interviewed for an internship and ended up getting a full-time job at, at the Globe uh, for its engagement. A friend of mine was a stage management intern and ended up becoming part of the Globe's stage management staff. Internships are your opportunity to not only get hands-on education, but also to show staff how great you are to work with and build your network with companies you admire. Now, it's important to be realistic about internships as well. For me, I didn't have a car until late college, and I found that getting to and from my internships was far more difficult without a car. It's also important to consider that many internships are unpaid. I had to pick up 4 a.m. opening shifts at Starbucks to support myself while I was doing unpaid internships. I also had to make sure my class schedule wouldn't interfere. Now, this by no means is meant to discourage you. I just want to make sure I'm giving the full picture of my experience and, you know, not just the pretty shiny parts. 
Yes, totally. I can actually attest to that. The best advice I've been given was when doing internships or just cast in anything, really, I always make sure to take the initiative to do anything that is not really asked of me or if, let's say, I have downtime and instead of being on my phone watching Netflix or on Instagram, I sweep the floors or arrange the chairs, do anything that is needed around the studio or space. And it doesn't go unnoticed and it helps me stand out so that maybe they think of me for future projects. What is something that you take with you when going to these internships or how to secure them? Oh, Jada, that is such a good piece of advice. I, I will also go along with that uh, sentiment that being proactive is really important. Not only once you've already secured that internship and are on the job, but even searching for internships. Now, I already went over some ways you can search for them on their websites or on Playbill. But if you see an internship or you, you have an internship in mind, you want to learn something from a theater company and the company doesn't have an explicit, hey, we're looking for this specific internship. Uh apply here. You can be proactive and ask. See if you can find the contact information, who is in charge of internships, which department that is, and, and shoot them an email saying, hey, I'm I'm this person and I am a student and I'm interested in learning this and this. And I was wondering if you, there's any opportunities for an internship or volunteering for something. And, you know, sometimes that works. I can, I, I remember when I was working at the Globe, we got an email um, from someone who was interested in interning for us and had very specific things about what she wanted to learn. Um, and then by the time we had something that aligned with what she wanted, we, we remembered her. We were like, oh, she's fresh in our mind. She sent us an email. We didn't say that we needed an intern, but we actually need help with this. Hey, uh, you emailed us. Can you can you come and help us with this with this uh, like Globe for All tour, for example? So be being proactive really helps. And even if the company cannot offer an internship like that specific internship at that time, it, you've you've connected with the company. They have you in mind possibly for other opportunities to volunteer or intern. If something comes up, you've already connected. So that's super helpful to be proactive not only on on the internship but in searching for it as well. Now, uh, if internships aren't quite realistic for you, which is totally fine, another option is to volunteer. This option is great if you can't commit to a full internship and if you need to rack up some volunteer hours. You can still uh, work with theater professionals and sometimes you get a few benefits. Many not-for-profit arts organizations rely on the generosity of volunteers. You can often find these opportunities on the theater company's websites. Um, the Globe in particular has tons of volunteer opportunities, including, but not limited to, arts engagement, marketing, costume shop, that's a popular one, and backstage tour docents. You might also opt to become an usher. In return, to, in return for a certain number of hours of volunteering, you get invited to attend final dress rehearsals, the opportunity to see Globe productions free of charge, and a discount at the gift shop. I've also seen theater companies ask for volunteers for their play festivals, and I highly recommend this because you often get to watch new groundbreaking plays in exchange for your time and effort. I encourage you to reach out to Vietka uh, for possible future volunteer opportunities with Arts Engagement. Arts Engagement does basically all their work by, for, and with the community. Volunteering with them is one of the greatest ways to get to know your community. I cannot recommend it enough. My years working for them was, they, they were some of the most inspiring, insightful, and important of my career. And I got to work with so many beautiful members of my community from all walks of life and learn their stories. They may not have been theater professionals or an opportunity to advance my career, but I want to emphasize again that the genuine human connections are what are important in building community, not business opportunities. Who knows, someone's story might inspire you to write a play. Artists pull from life. So when you are in service of your community, you're being responsible for it. You're, you're, you're building it. Um, 
And also, you don't have to be a creative to work in a theater space. There are tons of opportunities for admin work or even like IT work. Admin work was my bread and butter outside of acting. And they are absolutely essential to making a theater run. There really is a place for everyone. Yes, that's really good information, especially for me as a student. Um, what do you recommend? You've talked about these both worlds, volunteering and internships. For students either in high school or first year of college, what do you recommend them doing? Volunteer first or internship first and then moving into volunteer? What is, what do you think? That's a really great question. Um, when you are in your senior year of high school um, or in your couple first years of college, it, it might, it's, it's a huge transition phase. Um, and so you might not have as much time to commit to a full internship. Um, usually with, with high school, your classes are still, are, they're stricter. Um, you don't really get a chance to choose when they are like in college and just, you know, have a lot of extra time to commit to an internship. And internships can be a lot of time. It's a huge workload. Um, and some people can't commit to that. So for someone who is in senior year or first couple of years of college, I'd, I'd, I'd recommend being conscious of, of your workload. I think volunteering is a great option because one, you it's it's less of a time commit, commitment. Um, they're limited time events. And so you get you have the opportunity to get to know many different theater companies, um, volunteering for for each of them, as opposed to spending a long period of time, possibly many weeks or months, at an internship at one company. So that's a great way to get to know different theater companies in your community, volunteering while not having to commit to so many so many hours of an internship um and like i said the first years of college are it's a huge transitional phase not only you're transitioning into adulthood sometimes you're moving on campus or you're moving away from home it's a lot to adjust to and i want to make sure that you know you're taking care of your mental health as well be conscious of your workload try not to take on too much because that, that can really affect you and, and i want i want you to be able to focus on college and your education. And then later on, you know, you, you can explore that, but don't, don't beat yourself up if you can't secure an internship while you're a freshman or a sophomore taking your GEs and you have all these finals and all these, and you have to work, you have a job too on the side. Like it's, it's tough. It's tough. So go easy on yourself. For me, I didn't have an internship until my last year of college. When I had taken all my GEs, I was just doing the extra couple, few classes to meet my requirements, taking those fun classes that because I could, I had the time. Um, so I had the time my senior year to, to accept an internship. So just be conscious of that workload. So again, seniors, first couple years of college, volunteer if you can, if you can, um, and then save the internships for later on if that's meant for you. But again, everyone is different. Everyone has a different situation, but that's my recommendation from experience. Yes, definitely. Workload is an important thing to think about. <laughs> um, so do you want to continue talking about your final Yeah, topic? absolutely. So the final topic I want to cover is creating your own work. This can help you find, build, and be active in your community, all three. Do you have a story you want to tell? Um, is there something missing in your theater community that you want to create? Are there limited roles for you? So you decide you want to make one yourself, a la Lin-Manuel Miranda. That's the, that's the predicament I found myself in not too long ago. I was an actor of color in San Diego where most of the audiences are white. The majority of the actors cast were white. Tokenism ran rampant. I observed an insane lack of representation for Filipinos in theater. I'm Filipino. Um, so I went to every diversity in theater meeting. I spoke out against racism in theater, but still I felt there wasn't a space for me. So five other Filipino theater artists and I did something about it. And we founded Maarte Theater Collective, whose mission was to create space for the Filipino American experience through dynamic storytelling. We produced shows by, for, and featuring Filipinos. We covered difficult topics like trauma, domestic violence, racism, and more. We hired non-union actors from the community. We toured different communities with the show. 
we supported local Filipino businesses with collaborative projects. We found our Filipino community. We built a community of Filipino artists and allies. We were active in that community and shared it with others. And we started with just an idea, nothing fancy. We, we had no money. We had meetings at boba shops, as you can see in that little bottom left picture. <laughs> we rehearsed in friends' houses. We didn't have any formal rehearsal spaces. We fundraised a ton. We sold lumpia. Everybody loves lumpia, right? We rented theater spaces. Starting with little to no resources, we created our own space for Filipino artists. And I was able to work with mega talented Filipino playwrights, actors, designers, and directors that I might not have ever met if it wasn't for the collective. Being a six person company of mostly actors, directors, and designers, we obviously had to learn all the other positions necessary to run a theater company. I picked up the role of production manager and I learned a ton. Another person took up marketing, another person managed money and so on and so forth. So there's a lot to be learned from creating your own work. And I witnessed even high school aged students or not students, but artists taking the initiative to start their own theater companies or write and produce their own plays and musicals. So for artists like me and them who didn't like something about the current theater climate or saw something missing that they were deeply passionate about, my advice is don't wait around for things to change. Make it happen yourself. And the community you build along the way is so worth it. Not to mention you learn marketable skills you can use for the rest of your life. So that was really the bulk of what I wanted to talk about. But I do want to leave you with a, just a few more pieces of advice. Um, the first one is ask all the questions. Talk to artists who have experience with what you want. Talk to many of them. Ask as, as everyone has had different experiences. Talk to your theater teachers. I have received help and guidance from so many people, all of whom I owe my career to. Um, two is support fellow artists. People often remember when you go and support their work and that's integral to, to maintaining a, an arts community, support them. Um, three is a big one and it's really important in my opinion is to have other passions. I think it's important to not make your entire life about theater. Coco mentioned this in the in the in uh, one of the previous episodes about how like if you have uh, an audition that you're not happy with, you don't want it to ruin the rest of your day. You don't want to ruminate on it and just have all this you know down in the dumps because that's your focus. Like I said, I didn't have a car until late college, so I couldn't do community theater in San Diego until after I graduated. So don't compare yourself to others. I didn't have professional headshots until last year. The one I used for so long was taken in front of a bakery outside for a playbill. <laughs> it was a good photo. I Thank you to that photographer. It was, it was great. Um, but I wouldn't have been able to even do an internship if I didn't have, you know, a paying job, which not everyone is, is available for. An acting MFA wasn't realistic for me financially. So there is no one route to success in this industry. And a lot of it is based in privileged, uh, privilege, sorry. And that's the truth, it's based in privilege. So be mindful of that and don't beat yourself up if you see this person doing that or that person getting this. Just always be kind, work hard and do your best. Um, five, if you're planning on going to college, it helps to think about where you would like to start building your network. You're going to be spending a few years there, so take a look at the arts communities in the area that you might be able to start working in. This, of course, is if cost isn't an issue. Uh, I personally was limited to California colleges because I couldn't afford out-of-state tuition. My friends who were fortunately able to afford going to college in New York got a head start on their industry connections because they were already there. But going back to my previous point, that just wasn't realistic for me, and that's okay. Six, it helps to be specific about what kind of theater you want to do. 
It will help you find your community of artists who share similar goals or visions. It will help you decide which projects you decide to to get involved with or not. Um, I had a passion for theater that destigmatized mental health or helped to destigmatize it. And through that, I met other artists who I ended up collaborating with to create it. Lastly, find safe ways to be creative during the pandemic. We're all in the same boat as theater geeks. We, we don't know when we'll have any sense of normalcy in our industry again. So I hope you're able to find opportunities for you to work that creative muscle. For me, in quarantine, I wrote, directed, designed, acted, filmed, and edited my first play, something I never would have even considered. But now I have this video of me talking to and arguing with myself uh, like a maniac, and I have never been so proud. Now is a great time to step out of your comfort zone and try something new. So I hope I was able to provide you with a little bit of guidance, even though I can only speak from personal experience. Yes, theater is auditioning constantly, being able to market yourself and constantly learning, practicing and studying, but remember the root of theater, community. Theater is humanity. It's about our connections to each other. And I hope each of your careers are fruitful and full of these beautiful human connections. Thank you so much, Rianne, for that Thank wonderful you. advice you gave all of us. Now we're going to move into a Q&A. I have some Q&A questions ready here for you. So my first one is, is it really possible to work at a theater or other jobs while being an artist? I feel self-care would suffer from this schedule. Can you repeat that question? Yes. Is it really possible to work at a theater or other jobs while being an artist? I feel self-care would suffer from this schedule. That is such a good question. I have like, that was my life the past few years. I had a, a full-time job and I was super passionate about acting. I wanted to do shows. I didn't want to stop doing shows to do a job. And I was so lucky to be able to get a job that, that worked with that. Now, San Diego specifically, um, because New York is different. New York, there are so many actors in New York that there are tons of jobs available that kind of tailor to an actor's schedule. So an actor says, oh, I need to be auditioning these hours in the day and then I have rehearsals at night, so I need to work these hours. And they're like, okay, cool, yeah, that works with us. In San Diego, it's different. Um, I'd say it's actually it's easier because most of the theater com companies in San Diego, unlike New York City, they rehearse at night. And so, it's a lot, it's a lot of hours to be up and, and, and moving around, but it was great because during the daytime, I would work my full-time job at the Globe, which was not acting. It was desk stuff and, and arts engagement stuff, um, which I still loved. Love you guys. Um, and then after work, I would drive to rehearsal or I'd have a quick dinner break and then go to rehearsal or, or do a show. So that worked. It doesn't work for everyone. I know it's, it's super tiring, but for me, I was, I just, had to do shows. I, I couldn't imagine my life without it. Um, and so I would, I, I, of course, I wouldn't get as much sleep as I would if I didn't have shows in the evenings, but I was so lucky to be able to work, have a full-time job, be able to support myself and have a job that I loved. Um, and then do something that I also loved at night. Some actors that I know in the community work jobs that aren't related to theater. So if they weren't working a job at the Globe like me, um, they would work another job like as a barista. And like Starbucks has, I chose Starbucks at the time because they they had like, they would help you pay for college um, or they, they had like a 401k opportunity. They just had a lot of great benefits for their employees. Um, but my, a lot of people's like stability job um, doesn't always have to do with theater. I just got mad lucky that my 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 job job was was theater. Um, but yes, 
self-care is so important. So again, be conscious of what kind of workload you're able to have um, to, to handle. Um, but yes, it is possible. It is possible, especially in San Diego. San Diego has a great theater community. And thankfully, I think most, if not all of their productions rehearse and perform at night besides, you know, like matinee weekends or, or, um, or rehearsals on the weekends. So yeah, it's a lot of extra work, but if you love it, then you can make it happen. I hope that answers your question. Yes, I'm sure it did. Um, our next question is, what are the first steps if I wanted to create my own theater company? Ooh, okay. This is a tough one because this is six people when I did it. Um, Vieka, I want to ask, um, didn't Imani King make a theater company? Or something like that. Kimberly King's son, who did a uh, studio. He did. He did. I don't have the um, ins and outs of it, but you definitely need a lot of time, and mm -hmm. um, you, I don't think you need that much money. As far as you know, people think that that's a barrier. It takes more blood, sweat, and tears, really. Right? You'd agree, right, Rian? Yes. Yeah, so for us, again, we just started with an idea. We just got together and we're like, "Hey, we don't like this. Can we change it?" So we were like, "Yes." So we got together. And that's the first thing. Um, get together the people that you want to work with, kind of have a plan um, for the work you kind of, the kind of work that you want to produce, and then see if other people are on board for that plan. Have an idea of what kind of productions you want to put on, and then we kind of just hit the ground running with with putting together our first production, gathering actors, uh, selecting which play we want. If we weren't going to write it ourselves, um, finding Filipino playwright or the player we wanted, and or a play that was already written that we loved and wanted to produce. So all that stuff. And then later on, once we had established our ideas and, and that those kinds of plans, we filed for it's a 501c3. Um, I think it's like, a, I don't know the exact term for it. My goodness, it's like a business one. Vieka, do you have the answer to that? Yeah, if you wanted it to be a nonprofit, it would be a right. 501c3 or some yes. subset of that one. And then if you wanted it to be a, a company, it could be a sole proprietorship if it's just you or an LLC if it's multiple people. Big, big terms, big words. Thankfully, that was not my department when, I'm, when we were doing this. <laughs> Thankfully, well, some of the people who had stronger talents, who were, I mean, who were stronger in that field in that sense. And that's another thing. Find people that like you know, you have different strengths. Because if you have all the people that are all good at the same thing, but then like lack knowledge and, and talent in another thing, that's a weird balance. But thankfully, the six people in our group had strengths in so many different things. And so it kind of like fit together like a puzzle. Um, so be considerate of that. And if not, we are in the age of the internet. All the information is at your fingertips. It's a lot of work. Like Vieka said, it's blood, sweat, and tears but it can be so worth it. Um, it has a lasting impact on communities and it gives other people opportunities, not just yourself. And I don't know, I get a really good feeling when, when other people get opportunities because for me, like I was on that end of things. I am on that end of things. Someone else extends an opportunity to me because they created something. I'm like, yes, thank you, yes. So yeah, those, I mean, sorry to not be so specific about the, the tangible first steps, like a list one, two, three, um, so I hope you're able to find, you know, better, <laughs> more clear answers online. Um, but that's just from my experience. Yes, thank you. <laughs> okay, next question. If you were to choose a combo of your favorite plays or musicals you have worked on, what two would you choose? A so, combo? Like ones. Oh, I was about to say, like, like mix it together and make one show? No. <laughs> Like your two favorite ones. My two favorite. Oh man, ones that I only ones that I've done, right? Oh god, what's on my resume? Um. Uh, uh One of my favorite ones, um, was with this collective, and it was with Asian Story Theater. Now, this wasn't like a big, major Lort Theater production, huge stage and bright lights. This one was so stripped down this was the one we toured in the community it was called the fire in me and it had to do with uh domestic violence um towards towards immigrants and um 
how their spouses were in a position of power that they would threaten, you know, deportation or things like that. So very serious stuff that people were actually experiencing in the community. It was inspired by the community. And so being able to present it to the people that were experiencing it is the, uh, the rawest form of human connection. Like I may not have gone through it myself, but there's something about seeing your story represented and, and and playing out on stage that is just I think that is the most beautiful part of theater that connection and so we did that and it was just you know we set up plastic chairs in a square taped off similar to what uh, the old globe does with their globe for altar when they take out in the communities um, they just tape off a square bring whatever you know portable set pieces there are and then set up chairs around for an audience and it's it's not like a huge stage with big lights, like I said, but it's it's very intimate. And it was such a special thing, especially when it's talking about a really hard subject. Um, so being able to to be there with that audience, with those audiences, that was definitely one of my favorite. Again, that's The Fire in Me by Thelma, Thelma Rada de, de Castro, who actually, one of her plays is premiering on, on Friday with the Living Room Play Workshop, if you wanna tune in for uh, the Old Globes Arts Engagement. Um, the other one, oh God, let's choose a musical for the other one. Um, oh, okay. Um, I think college, I think college had some really fun ones. I know I've like worked at the Globe and stuff and done shows and those are super fun, especially like doing world premieres where like, you know, you're getting script revisions. Um, right before the freaking show. And so, you know, it's it's like, it's a living it's a living thing doing a world premiere. It keeps changing and it's new. No one's ever performed it before. But I think the college ones and the school productions were so fun. Um, I did I did a college production of Legally Blonde um, and I was Vivian. I found out that one of my big types as an actor is the B, the B word. Um, uh, and so I got to play Vivian Kensington, the antagonist of Legally Blonde the Musical. And we like didn't have a huge budget for a set or like, um, I mean, we're all students. And so that's like just super fun. It's literally just all people doing what they love. And that's kind of the most fun about this thing. And then when you add the, the aspect of, you know, getting paid for and it's a, jo a job job, that's also cool. But that I think I had the most fun uh doing it just for the fun of it because I was passionate about it. Yes, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Ryan. Our last question was actually for me, which was like what I was doing next. Um, right now I'm a senior in high school. Woo, senior year doing Woo! a pandemic. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So um, I'm applying to colleges. I my passion is theater, just like you, and yes. acting. I want to apply to schools more in LA so I could like audition for like film stuff and also theater stuff. So I kind of just have a wide range of things and possibilities. Wyatt, so can I ask like one more question for Rianne? Okay, my question for you. This is from me. I have been like so frustrated sometimes when it comes to auditions and theater stuff because I'll audition for something and they'll be like actually you have to be 18 and older and this has made me have like so many gaps in my resume from like year gaps just because I can't find a theater company that will take me because I'm so young what advice do you have for me on that mm. Does your school do productions? No, they don't. Okay. And you did you did like CYT and those other youth uh, mm -hmm. theater companies. Ooh, that's a that's a tough one. Um I have worked on productions with quote unquote child actors. Um like like Grinch is one of them. Um the world premiere I did also had child actors, local ones. Um, so you don't, they don't just like always have to hire kids out of uh, New York City and fly them in or, or LA. Um, so it is, it is possible um, to, to do these shows um, before you're 18. It's just really, it's really tricky. Um, 
especially if if how you read is older and they're looking for like an actual kid kid um that's that's tough um i'm trying to think of theater companies that i'm not sure like the rule i know it's like a little it's there's some like more paperwork or something involved when you're a minor um but I definitely want you to look into Globe auditions and La Jolla Playhouse auditions. And, um, you know, even if you aren't cast in those ones that, that they're casting at the moment, again, you're, you're on their, you're, you're in their system. Um, so when you do turn 18, they can, they can reach out to you, especially when you're 18, like a lot of people still read really young. And so that's, that's still good. Um, Sorry, I do, that's that's a really tough one. I just don't have a ton ex- of experience in it because when I was before I was eighteen, I was just doing school productions. I didn't start doing any professional stuff until after I graduated. Um, so I can't speak from experience there. But really, I think you, you you do wonderfully on a Globe stage or a La Jolla Playhouse. So take a look at those auditions. Um, usually, they'll say if they're looking for eighteen and older or not. Um, so, God, I hope that helps at least a little bit. Yes, it does. Thank <laughs> you so much. LA, LA, that sounds so exciting. I'm yes, sure there's there's a lot more opportunities, especially in like film. Uh, film is a lot more friendly too um, to minors. That sounds so awful, but I mean, I, they they they're more welcoming. There's a lot more context because you know, camera. It's hard to pass off you know an adult playing a child on camera than it is to do it on stage, you know? So, um, film too. Yeah. And commercials. You do great. You're gorgeous. (laughs) Yes. Thank you so much for coming, Rianne. We love you. Thank you you for having me. So much great advice to give us. My notebook is all filled up. Oh, I love that. Oh, we're the same. I take copious amounts of notes. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> definitely great talk thank you so much for having me Vietka. i loved being our host today for the creative youth studio thank you for this tuning in i am going to pass it on back to Vietka. thank you to you both for to, uh for hosting and being a guest artist today i think it's always really fun to have people who were part of our past come back because once you're a globe family, you're always globe family. So, um, uh, Rianne, I'm so glad you mentioned other areas that you can work in theater because it's not just about being a creative. But next week, we have a different kind of creative coming on the show. We have Shelly Williams, who will be uh, one of our guest artists, and she is in the costumes department. And so, um, and another thing, I don't have that much advice as a theater person um, because I don't come from that background either. And so I think community theaters often have calls for uh, student or child actors, which, you know, sometimes I think about, sometimes I think about becoming an actor and I was like, oh, I wish, I wish I could audition for that. <laughs> so um, look into that as well. And if you have any questions for us, please uh, feel free to email us at um, aeinfo at theoglobe.org or contact us on social media and we will be back next week. Take care, everyone.